morning and welcome to Northwoods Presbyterian Church. Psalm 150 begins, hallelujah, praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Friends, welcome as we gather together to worship God and to praise God together. We believe that everyone needs a church home, and if you are looking to become a part of a church family, we would love to get to know you. We ask everyone worshiping with us online to please register your worship attendance with us in the comments section, and there's a link to do that. For those of you worshiping with us in person, thank you for checking in this morning um, with our new tablets and helping us to get that process going so we can know who's here and reach out to those who are not. On Thursday, we are starting a brand new Bible study. This is geared for women, and it is um, a group that meets just once a month, so it's not a big time commitment. If you are looking, if you've ever thought about becoming a part of a Bible study, this is a great opportunity to do so. It meets once a month, the first Thursday of the month, so it starts this Thursday um, at 10 o'clock, September 2nd. We're studying the women, some women in the Bible who are part of Jesus' genealogy, and so we're looking at their life and how they impacted Jesus. If you have any questions, please let me know. We hope you can join us Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Make a Difference Day is coming up on Saturday, September 11th. All of our teams could use extra help. So whether you want to build beds, help feed the hungry, sing, quilt, or deliver gift baskets, we have a spot for you. We need your help. So please register. There's a link on our website on the home page, or you can contact Pastor David. We are excited to welcome back the Reverend Dr. Tom Tool as our Day of Renewal speaker. Tom has a way of challenging us, of making us laugh, and helping us to grow in faith. So we ask that you save the date, October 16th from 8.30 to noon. We continue to welcome nominations for church officers. If you know of someone who loves our church, who has a gracious and wise spirit, please pass their name along to us as we look to the future and to what God is calling us to do. Psalm 150 closes with this. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. And now Jennifer will introduce a new Psalm 150 hymn so that we can join together and praise God. So this is in our hymnal. It's 258 in our hymnal if you want to look there or the words will be on the wall. But now I'd like for us to sing the uh, refrain for you because we invite you to join us every time the refrain comes around. It sounds like this. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Not too difficult. I hope you will join us as we sing. Oh, 
In God's true book, the Bible, Jesus uses pictures to tell us seven great things about himself. They all start with the words, I am. Here is the sixth picture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is amazing. He made the stars and the planets. He made the world and everything in it, including you and me. God made us to be with him. But because we chose to walk away from him, God's true book tells us it is like being lost. I got lost once. It was really scary. All I wanted was to be back with my dad again. And that is what life is like now. We need to be back with God again. We need to not be lost anymore. Now, I'm going to draw you something. Can you tell me what this is? Any guesses? That's right. It's a map. Sometimes people use maps to get to places. Pirates use it to get to treasure. Weather people use maps to explain the weather, and I use maps when I go out driving. Maps are really important. When Jesus says he is the way, it's like he's saying he is the map. He is the only place we can go to get to God. But what if the map lied? What about if it told me to turn left instead of right? What if my map lied? That would be a really big problem. But Jesus says that he is the map that tells the truth. When someone tells the truth, we can trust them, can't we? That is what Jesus means when he says he is the way and the truth. But what about the life? Imagine that at the end of your map, you were going to find the best treasure. Everything you ever wanted, it was going to make you so happy. That is what Jesus means by life. When we say sorry to God, we believe in Jesus and follow him as our king. Then we become part of God's amazing family. And that is a family that we get to be with forever. That is good news. To go with Miss Teresa out for Children's Sunday School. And the rest of you, I invite to stand with me, please, and sing about being lost and found again as we sing together Amazing Grace.
please be seated. If you're feeling down all week, you can always count on me. I will always pick you up. Nothing's ever gonna change. Every Sunday, we are reminded of our faith statement. We are Christ's disciples, celebrating God's grace, creating community, and making a difference. As the staff person at Northwoods overseeing missions and adult education, I deal with the statements make a difference and Christ disciples on a regular basis. However, the other ideas in our statements seem to represent our reality at Northwoods in powerful ways as well. As we start a new season for our church today, I thought it would be interesting to ask three generations of Northwoods the question, what does it mean to be part of a community of grace? Here is what I found. Grace means a disposition to show kindness and compassion. And I think that's exactly what Norwoods is. We are a big family. We come in different sizes, different ages, different colors, flavors, cultures, different political parties, and we can agree or disagree, but something we all agree with is that we are the family of God and we love making disciples, creating community and making a difference. Love, Norwitz. So I think it is a group of people who are there for your nurture and your caring of your spiritual journey. And uh, especially with the youth, they really care about who you're gonna turn out to be. And everyone's really looking out for you, for, um, for each other. Um, and not only that, we're growing our faith and our um, spiritual um, strength uh, together as a group. Good morning, Northwoods family. As most of you know, I came from a very large church. And with me, I brought very large church ideas. I didn't know what to expect, nor what would I find. What I did find was acceptance. Acceptance is the willful and courageous act. It's an open dialogue, which is not passive. And it's not just a freeing thought, but it's a hard commitment. And that's what makes it so difficult. You can't fake acceptance. Your conscience wouldn't let you. What I found here with acceptance, with grace. Not just from leadership, but most importantly, from you, the congregation. It demonstrated to me that I was becoming part of a Christian family of Christ's disciples, showing His grace and mercy to me and all that come to Northwest. And I thank you for that. I wouldn't have it any other way. You're surrounded by love and you're wanted. So never feel alone. You are home with me right where you belong. To listen to those experiences made me think of our kickoff Sunday today as we enter a new season for our church. It would be an understatement to say that this new wave of COVID cases is making it more challenging for churches to plan events and organize activities. As a result of these challenges, we have had to learn over the past two years how to adjust and make changes to continue doing ministry. But there is something that never changes here in Northwoods. No matter the season of the year, and no matter how hard, uncertain, and challenging the reality may be. And it is our vocation of being a community of grace and inclusiveness. So thank you Northwoods so much for being a home of grace for everyone. And may God bless you.
I forgot to mention to propose those speakers be the preachers for the following sermon series. I also want to mention that uh, yesterday we had our day of service at NAM, uh, delivering groceries to homebound seniors in our community. So thank you all volunteers who made a difference in their lives. Thank you so much. So with this in mind, uh, let's pray together. Our Father, who are in heaven in our hearts, we worship and praise you with grateful heart for this new day and for all blessings we enjoy every day. But we know also today as our country is mourning the loss of our heroes who sacrificed their lives to save others. Many are coming to our country, to our city, escaping from violence and poverty and persecution. Also this morning, many are bracing for this terrible hurricane Haida, Haida with fearful hearts in Louisiana. Many also in our community are going through difficult times right now. Please, Lord, be their hope, be their strength, be their peace, and above all, teach us how to make your presence real among them. We want to be your church, the church you meant to be, founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us. Let us open our hearts and doors. Let us offer them our best as if they were Jesus Christ himself asking us for help. Today, as we open another season in our community, this is also our prayer and desire, Lord. We know that we cannot achieve anything if you don't guide us, if your spirit does not lead us. So acknowledging that we cannot move forward without you, we place all our energies all our human efforts and plans into your hands. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and our God. God. Until then, teach us how to be your hands and voice among those who need you the most. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus, the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next song this morning is called The Way. I know it's hard to see me back here. I'm the short one behind the tall people up front. Our next song is called The Way, which is a wonderful song as we kick off this new sermon series on The Way. So you will hear this song for several weeks, and I encourage you, um, as you become more comfortable with it, to join us in singing. But feel free to stay in your seats right now. Um, hear the words, watch, watch the words, and have the song wash over you. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, oh you are my portion, you are my hiding place, I believe that you are.
are provider, you are protector, you are the one I love. I believe in you are the way, the truth, the life. Yes, I How great it is that Father and Son can sing together and lead us in worship. Thank you. You could clap to that. <laughs> Music's powerful, and we believe that God speaks through music, whether it's singing Psalm 150 or hearing a beautiful song about the Scripture. It's our hope and prayer that we hear and listen and are open to hear God's word for us this day. Our scripture this morning is a familiar passage. Listen for God's word. <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going? Thomas said to him, Lord, <laughs> we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? 
Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we don't want to just go through the motions, but believe that you have a word for each of us. So free us from those things that may be clouding our minds so that we can hear your word tailor-made for us this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, life is kind of like a box of chocolates. What? Because you never know what you're going to get. What are you talking about? You don't remember? Mom told us. It was some movie back in the 1900s, very long ago. Was it a forest or dump something? No. I don't remember anyway. But anyway, let, let me check the time. Good idea. We don't want to miss Pastor Paul's sermon. Okay, it is time to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, wait. Do you have your mat? Yes, I do. Do you? Yes. Oh, I oh. like how our mat is our color. Oh, too. I never thought about that. So cool. that. Where are you going? I'm going this way. Where are you going? I'm going this way. See ya. Uh, no, but don't you know that the wrong direction? Do you know the way? Yes, but there are different ways to get there. Okay, but I'm telling you, that's the wrong way. Ugh, big brother. They think we know everything. Look, there's even a sign. What sign? I don't see any sign. Right there. Uh-oh. I guess there only is one way. This Let's side. go. Do you, Do you know, know the way? way? Very nice. I like that. Today we're beginning this new sermon series entitled On the Way. Whenever we plan for a new sermon series, we try to find something that speaks to our current situation and helps us to grow in faith and take that next step of faith on our faith journey. Keeping that balance is important and at times a challenge. Because one of the realities is that we are all on different, or are all in different life situations, age-related, family-related, career, or health. And we are all on different places on our faith journey. Today, my family situation is very different than just two months ago, when my daughter and her family moved to Belgium. We all have unique situations. Originally, we had something else in mind for the fall way back when we were doing our planning. But we felt we needed to be more timely to our current situation. And so that's how we ended up on On the Way. Early followers of Jesus were known as people of the way. It also embraces the concept that we are all on this journey of faith. And just like I prayed, it's our hope and prayer that we hear God's word for us this day. So each week, we're going to look at the way from different uh, perspectives with different themes. Do we know the way today? Paving the way. Next is in a big way, losing our way, looking the other way, give way. And finally, help is on the way. Today's theme, <laughs> Do We Know the Way?, fits in nicely with our previous sermon series on That's a Great Question, because this is a great question as well. Now, before we try to unpack that question, did you notice Jesus' words that he began this scripture this morning with? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Why would Jesus say these words? Do not let your hearts be troubled. In the fourth gospel, we call this the great farewell discourse where Jesus is kind of laying out what's going to take place in the persecution and the crucifixion and things that are going to take place. And hearing those could be troubling. Also, when this fourth gospel was written, already the early church was experiencing persecution. 
And they too needed to hear some words of encouragement, to be reminded of some important words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. What are you troubled about right now? We're troubled about what's going on in Louisiana, aren't we? We have friends and people we know that are in harm's way, and we know what it's like firsthand to go through that. We don't wish that on anyone. The coronavirus definitely is troubling still. We thought we were on the back side of it just a month ago, right? Getting to that new normal, moving forward, and then we find out about a fourth wave. Two months ago, there were less than seven people at Houston Northwest Hospital with COVID. Now there's over 70. We're hearing stories of people not getting their care because ICUs are full. It's troubling. And to add to it, schools are opening and the big debate going on and we're arguing with one another. I'm troubled because our society is more politically polarized, that people care more about politics than people. I'm troubled by the partisan rhetoric that only adds more chaos and doesn't solve anything. I'm troubled about what's going on in Afghanistan, are you? The challenges suicide bomber, the service people that lost their lives, the families that have been affected, the Afghan people that were killed. I'm troubled about, it seems like, an uptick in road rage incidents in our community. Aren't you glad you came to church today? <laughs> What's troubling you right now? Is it your health? Are you worried about a family member, a relationship, your personal well-being? Thinking about all the health care workers and nurses and doctors that are stretched to the limit. Jesus see, sees what is going on with his followers and says to them and to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'd go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am going, there you may be also. <laughs> and one of the reasons why I love Thomas is Thomas is very direct. Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Have you ever been in a new situation and unsure how to get to a destination? The very first time we, I went and participated on the faith and practice medical mission trip to Guatemala, I'll never forget going to Antigua. Guatemala, an ancient city, and trying to walk around and getting used to uh, different places and enjoy the sights as we prepared and at the very end in getting some gifts uh, for family members, going through the city. You know how well I speak Espanol. And the struggle it would be to find the places where I'm looking for. Now there was a map and so on, but I was trying to find different streets. And whenever I would come to a corner, <laughs> I would look up and I would see, ah, una via. Found the street. That's good. Okay, I'll try to see if I could find that on the map. Couldn't find it on the map. I'd go a little bit further or turn the corner and all of a sudden... For some reason, Una Via. It felt a little like Memorial Drive 
you know where you can kind of drive one direction and you're in one place and then another direction and another and you could be going north or south, east or west. And it kind of felt like Unavia was doing that. Paul, they are one-way streets. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Way to figure out where you are. Sometimes we do get a little lost. And what's kind of interesting to me about that is what's our focus? What are we focusing on? Is it one sign amidst a whole lot of other signs? Is it part of this passage? Some people love this passage and some people do not like this passage. Some say it is a terrific passage because it speaks about in God's house there are many dwelling places. Some people believe those dwelling places might represent other religions and maybe there's other ways to get to God. There's other dwelling places, rooms, sharing God's grace. But then you come to the very end and it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And people use this passage to speak about Jesus' uniqueness. And it sounds exclusive. No one else can find God except those that follow Jesus. But what's interesting, if you heard the whole scripture, and if you would actually take time to read all of chapter 14 later on, Jesus ends right after, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. An important concept, theological belief, for the fourth gospel is the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, glory as a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The big point of this passage is Jesus and God are one, and if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. That's the sign in this passage. Unavia is talking more about direction. And here we see the importance of who Jesus is. Because it is in Jesus that the Word became flesh. Where is your life headed right now? Do you know the way? Here's some direction quotes. If you do not change direction, you may end up where you are heading. Directions are instructions given to explain how. Direction is a vision offered to explain why. And finally, a little push at the right direction can make a big difference. Good time as we begin this new program year to consider where you are on your faith journey. Where would you like to be? Do you know the way? This passage affirms what we've been looking at this summer. We need to keep asking questions. We can be honest with our questions. And you know the way to the place where I'm going? Thomas says, no. We do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's interesting that this passage invites us to ask ourselves, who are we following, or what are we following, or what do we believe in, and 
what are we putting our life and faith in? Eugene Peterson paraphrases it this way. Don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There's plenty of room for you in my father's house. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And you already know the road I'm taking. Thomas said, Master, we have no idea where you're going. How do you expect us to know the road? Jesus says, I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him. You've even seen him. We can come to God by knowing Jesus. Jesus points us in the right direction. Stories told about a missionary that was traveling in a remote village to train leaders in a local church. A guide was selected to take him to the village because the only way to read to reach this remote place was to walk through the jungle. The journey started out without much of a problem. The path was easy to see, easy to follow. But soon, however, the path literally disappeared as the guide would cut through the overgrown jungle with a machete. The missionary grew concerned and asked, where is the path? The guide smiled, looking back at the missionary, and said, I am the path. Looking for direction? Jesus is the path, is the way. John 10.10 10 was a life verse for me for many years. I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly, believing that Jesus invites us to be in a relationship to experience full, abundant, eternal life. I am thoroughly convinced that the more we focus our life on Jesus, the more we will experience life. The more we focus our life on Jesus, the more we'll help others experience life. The more you follow Jesus, the more you will experience life. The more you follow Jesus, the more you'll help others experience life. The more you do what Jesus says, the more you'll experience life. The more you do what Jesus says, the more you'll help others experience life. The Dalai Lama said, if you want others to be happy, Practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Desmond Tutu said, God's dream is that you and I and all of us will realize that we are family, that we are made for togetherness, for goodness, and for compassion. George Washington Carver said, How far you go in life depends on you being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and the strong. Because someday in life, you'll have been all of these. I'm going to close with a video that I believe illustrates what it means to follow in the direction of Jesus. To be open to try to think, well, how would Jesus respond to a situation? What does it mean to be a person on the way, following Jesus? What does that look like? Enjoy the video. When I pulled to the side of the road, I asked a lady if she needed help. The look on her face went from distress to relief. On the way to a gas station, I learned that she was down on her luck. She had only $5 in her purse and was worried about feeding her child. I filled her gas can and drove the woman back to her car. As I started to leave, I felt a nudge to give her what I had in my wallet. 
$40. She hugged me and thanked me. We said our goodbyes and the sweet lady slipped into memory. Three years passed. My mother was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, but the hospital said she could go home if she had a nurse's aid, which they would provide. The woman who was supposed to come to the house had a scheduling issue, so a substitute arrived. Her name was Tundy Hector. Mom quickly became very fond of Tundy. One day, after exercising, wearing sweats and my hat on backwards, I stopped in to visit Mom and met the nurse's aide who had been so good to her. Tundy told me about herself. She had been a nurse's aide off and on for 20 years, but had always dreamed of studying to be a nurse. During our pleasant conversation, she asked if I belonged to a church. I told her if we went to Cornerstone. Her face lit up and said, Oh, I met a young man from that church. She told me how she had run out of gas and was walking by the highway. The man had dropped his family at church and circled back to help her out. He not only filled my gas can, but gave me $40, she said. My jaw dropped. I couldn't believe it. I saw myself three years earlier being tugged to help a stranger. I said, Tundy, that was me. She was flabbergasted and felt she had been divinely aligned to work with my mother. It was an amazing God wink. As mother's health deteriorated, Tundy and my mom formed an even stronger bond. Eventually, mom died on Tundy's birthday. My family and I thought about how we could show our appreciation to Tundy for her loving care to mom. We had this idea. What if we could raise $1,000 to help her start nursing school? So secretly, we started a You Caring Fund Me campaign, but we had no idea Tundy's story would touch so many hearts. When we gave Tundy a check oh, mom. <laughs> for $8,000, she cried. The fund is now over $37,000. This whole story is one of the biggest God winks of my life. Tundy's too. When we follow after Jesus, we will experience abundant life and will help others experience abundant life. Will you pray with me? Lord, sometimes we see the signs and sometimes we miss them. We thank you that you came to show us direction, to give us purpose, and to be with us on the way. In your name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Here I Am Lord. Will you stand as we sing together?
told his followers, people will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. With that in mind, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And all God's children said, Amen.